Hello, my good friends. Mike Shreve here, founder and head troublemaker of the No Pants Project. You are listening to episode nine, where we're going to be talking about the seven lessons I learned in generating $100,000 in 45 days. Really not utilizing any assets I had previously, so this is definitely a from scratch situation. I'm hoping that you can take these lessons and apply them to whatever it is you're trying to do. Not because I think you'll necessarily generate $100,000. I don't know if that's possible. We'll, we'll talk about the details of how I made this money. And I think you'll find you know, maybe $100,000 isn't necessarily what you're going to be doing in the next six weeks. But maybe you just want to quit your job. And maybe you thought it was going to take six months. Well, let's see if we can do it in 45 days. Maybe you want to hit a certain income level, $5,000, $6,000, $7,000, $10,000 a month. Maybe you thought it was going to take you a year, two years, five years. Let's see if we can sort of condense it into 45 days. The purpose of this podcast is not just to tell you how we made that, that money, but to give you some tools to go accelerate whatever it is that you are trying to pursue. My goal for you is that in 45 days from now, you have the same reaction I did at the end of my 45 days, which was, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did way better than I thought I was going to do, right? That's ultimately what the purpose of this podcast is. So let's not get too hung up on the numbers. Let's make sure that we're focusing on uh, tangible takeaways that we can apply to our specific situation. One of the worst things you can do is just drool over somebody else's results and then never do anything for yourself. So let me give you a little bit of context. Uh, First off, let's talk about specifics. So yes, it was $131,777 in revenue, but profit is the only thing that really matters. We had expenses. Uh, Those expenses included some Facebook ads. Those expenses included some, uh, you know, hiring someone to build some tech pieces and pages and things like that. Uh, and then, of course, we had something like uh, uh, you know a, a virtual assistant helping us answer emails so that I didn't have to get you know hung up on answering support tickets. Uh, so all in all, after expenses, that one hundred thirty one thousand seven hundred seventy seven dollars turned into one hundred eight thousand nine hundred and forty dollars. So there's a more in depth breakdown of those financial numbers inside of the Expert Maker program where this 45-day challenge is housed. So basically six months ago, I told my email list, do you guys want to watch me make $20,000 in six weeks? And a bunch of people signed up for a a program we called The Expert Maker. In that program, there were checklists and everything. And what I did is for 45 days, I would turn my camera on while I was working and simply talk through what I was doing and uploaded every single one of those videos to a a course, a program, which is called the Expert Maker. So for those of you who are in the Expert Maker, you guys go check out the 45-day challenge, especially check out the the final breakdown. It's a a more in-depth look at the numbers and uh, even more takeaways uh, than what what we have time to do here on the podcast. So $108,000 is our actual take-home profit. Of course, there's taxes and things that, that come out of that. But that was our result after six weeks. We did not uh, utilize any assets that that we didn't have uh, before. In in other words, it was a brand new product, a brand new everything. I didn't sell to my email list. I didn't sell to anyone who already knew me. I made sure to take every, uh, you know, every every precaution to simulate what it would be like if I was starting out completely from scratch. Now, the one thing that I couldn't simulate, and this is the big caveat here, and this is why I'm saying, you know, maybe maybe you aren't going to be able to make $100,000 in the next six weeks, um, but maybe that's not your goal anyways. Maybe your goal is just to quit your job, or maybe your goal is to uh, hit a certain income level. Uh, so the one thing that I couldn't simulate is lack of knowledge. So the thing we did to generate that income is what I talked about in episode eight of the No Pants Show. I provided that same service, the $12,000 a month service. I just did it for myself. So I built my own break-even machine. I built my own signature product. 
and I built my own workshop to sell the signature product, the signature program, the coaching program. Okay, so that's, that is the mechanism that we used. And if you listen to yesterday's podcast, you know, I've been doing that for many years. So that's the only thing I couldn't simulate. So this is why, you know, big fat disclaimer, I'm not saying just because you listen to this podcast, you're going to make $100,000. However, it doesn't mean we can't help you get much faster results from the lessons learned in the next six weeks, starting wherever you are at right now. When I told my email list and I launched this Expert Maker program, my goal was simply to be able to uh, generate $20,000 in six weeks. Completely blew that out of the water, generating 130. There are seven reasons why I think that happened, and I want to share them with you so that you can, like I said earlier, Get the kind of results where you walk away and you think, gosh, that's way better than I thought it was going to (laughs) be. That, you know, whatever it is you're going to do. Wow, I thought it was going to take me a year to get to six figures as a freelancer, but gosh, it only took me two and a half months. I thought it was going to take me, you know, this happens a lot in our, in the No Pants Project coaching and mentoring program. People come into our program with these expectations that it's going to take them all of this work to get to where they want to go. But the reality is, is that oftentimes where you want to go is only a few moves away. And if you know what the right moves are, you can get there much faster. And that's why we have people who after 30 days are quitting their job, even though the the, sort of the goal is 90, or we have people who are getting clients within their first two weeks, people getting uh, client responses within 24 hours. These lessons I'm about to share with you are the reason why it's so important that you leave yourself open to better results than you even expect for yourself. And that actually brings me to my first lesson is to learn to let go of limits. So you and I have very different experiences in life. You've done different things than I do. Maybe you are just an incredible rock climber and it's very easy for you to scale a wall. I consider myself, if I can be an arrogant braggadocious here for a second, I consider myself pretty good at business. I've devoted a lot of my life to to the principles of business and the, the philosophies of business and learning how to get money right? How to build a service and a product and etc. About a decade of my life has been devoted to that single purpose. And maybe a decade of your life has been devoted to rock climbing. Well, guess what? I don't think I can climb a wall. And you may say to yourself, what are you talking about? It's easy. I do it all the time. It's no big deal. I have that same feeling towards getting money, which might be shocking to you, who hasn't spent a decade thinking about getting money or, you know, getting clients, making sales, running business. The the takeaway of that example, the thing to notice about that is that our limits that are in our, that's in our head is not truth with a capital T. In other words, What's hard for you is not universally hard. What's easy for you is not universally easy. You are just better at some things than other people, and you are worse at some things than other people. It doesn't mean that objectively, the things that are easy for you are easy for everyone, and the things that are hard for you are hard for everyone. And if you are in a state of mind right now where you're working on something that's difficult, one of the hurdles that is preventing you from getting what you want is what's called a limiting belief, which is to say, at the moment, because it's hard for you, you, you it's difficult for you to believe that it's true. And this limiting belief 
is dangerous, not because you need to go around believing what random people on the internet say. That's not what I'm saying. A limiting belief of where you say, this is impossible, this is hard, when objectively it isn't, when objectively other people have accomplished what you're trying to accomplish, and you know, let's be honest, objectively, they're probably not smarter than you. They're probably not better than you. They're probably not, they probably don't have, you know, significantly more resources than you have. The danger of a limiting belief is that beliefs dictate the actions that we take. So when you are limiting yourself subjectively, again, Capital T truth, just because it's hard for you doesn't mean it is hard. Just because you haven't done it yet doesn't mean it's impossible. Your actions that you take will be really a net result of the beliefs you have. And if you believe that it's impossible, you believe it's too hard, you're likely not going to put in the effort where the effort needs to be put in. And our results... The consequences that we live on a day-to-day basis are a net result of the actions we take. This is why beliefs are dangerous. And they must be handled with care. And you must be fragile with your beliefs. And you must be conscious about questioning what you believe to be capital T truth when it comes to things like growing a business. Your opinion, okay, not truth, your opinion can directly affect your consequences. If you believe it's impossible, you will make it impossible. So lesson number one that I learned was just a reaffirmation, just another example to me, of the limiting belief. Because remember, I only thought I was going to make $20,000 in the six weeks. Ended up doing one hundred and thirty. So after a decade of doing this, I still had my own limiting belief. I mean, I knew it was possible. You know, I knew we were going to make money. I knew it was going to be profitable. I knew I'd be able to hit the 45-day deadline. But even after a decade, I had a limiting belief. So big lesson learned. You know, I, I think back to that to that time. I wonder what would have happened if I had thought $150,000 would have been easy. I wonder what actions I would have taken differently. And then I wonder what the result would have been and how much better it could have been. Because beliefs dictate actions, actions dictate results. All right, that's lesson number one. Lesson number two is this is just a really great marketing lesson. Specific is almost always better. If you're trying to figure out how can I sell my services, how can I sell my product, it's not really working, people aren't, you know, they're not into it, what's wrong? My guess is that you're probably not being specific enough about who it is that you're serving and what exactly it is they get when they buy something from you. So with this particular product, and again, this goes for services too, not just for products. Um, This could go for, and and by product, I want to be careful. We're not talking about selling stuff on e-commerce. We're talking about a, a coaching information, mentoring style product basically packaged service at scale is ultimately what this was. This particular product this is how specific it was. It was for people who wanted to be copywriters, but specifically people who wanted to be email copywriters. So it's a niche, a sub niche of a niche with a specific goal that they wanted to get to six figures a year. And specifically, they wanted to do that by using email as a foot in the door to then upsell to higher price copywriting services. Pretty darn specific. Most people who haven't been through the trials of 
having to sell stuff for 10 years probably would say, oh, if I go specific, doesn't that mean a lot of people aren't going to be interested? Yes. Number one, yes, that's true. It's a justifiable fear. But what you're not fully understanding is that by going more specific, you're talking more directly to the people you can help and they will identify you as the person who can help them specifically. Until you do that, you will appeal to no one. So the harder you work to um, attract everyone, which you may do, you may attract a lot of people, but you need to appeal to certain people and you need them to be able to identify themselves as your dream client before they will ever buy from you. So specific is always better. I believe that one of the key reasons that I blew out my own revenue goal is because I went more specific in this product. Again, a, a sub niche of a niche with very specific goals. Six figures by doing this specific model. I believe that's a big reason why uh, we were able to be so successful. Lesson number three is flexibility within constraints. So I don't want you to get the wrong idea. The 45-day challenge was not all roses and sunshine. Within about the first 10 days, I thought I wasn't even going to make the 20 grand. And here I had all these people in this program. And oh my gosh, I'm going to look like a total idiot. And... You know, I'm going to like ruin people's belief because they, they trusted me. They said that they could make this much money, uh, you know, that, that I was going to make this much money. And then if I, if I can't even make it, then they're going to believe that business isn't real and all. And I started to freak out a little bit. I was like, oh, no, this isn't going how I thought it was going to go. That is common in business. They say the best laid plans of mice and men, right? We all uh, uh, we all make plans. And life doesn't care. <laughs> life doesn't really care about our plans. Uh, life is going to crash like a tidal wave and we can hold on to our plan as tightly as we want, but it's very easy to get washed away. What happens to a lot of people is when things get difficult, their, res- their gut response to the difficulty is to avoid it, to get away from it which makes sense. But the problem is, is that their reaction is so knee jerk. It's so, uh, it's such an intense reaction. Oftentimes their reaction is above and beyond what's appropriate for the thing that actually happened. Okay. So they're reacting more than what is sufficient to solve the problem that what they do is they swing the gate too wide. In other words, maybe they just needed to tweak one small thing, but instead they've self-sabotaged, killed the entire project, and have now jumped onto the next shiny object. What flexibility within constraints, that concept is, even though I was 10 days into the 45-day challenge and it wasn't working, What I didn't do is jump to some other new idea. I didn't say, ah, you know what? This isn't going to work, guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start an e-commerce store. Ah, this didn't work. You know what I'm going to do, guys? I'm going to do this other thing, and I'm going to jump over here. Instead, what I did is I tried to find flexibility within the thing I was already doing. So specifically, what happened was... um, because of the way that I planned it out and because I needed help on the tech side, I did not factor in how long the build was going to take for what's called the break-even machine. So uh, just a really quick recap, if you didn't listen to episode eight of the podcast where I break down this specific uh, strategy, a break-even machine, you put a dollar of Facebook ads in, you get a dollar out, okay? So that was taking longer than... I was hoping it would take. And what I was seeing is that time was running out and I wasn't selling any of my 997s yet, so my $1,000 programs. So what I did is I, instead of 
breaking out of the model and trying 50 new things, I stay with my Facebook ads, I stay with my signature program, I stay with the break even, I kept building, I stayed with everything that I initially set out to do, but I made one slight adjustment. The adjustment that I made is I started running ads before the break even was ready. So when I say that there was a $2,000 investment, that's where it comes in. Uh, if I had had a larger window, like let's say it was a, a, a 60 day challenge, I would have not had to have even invested 2000 I just would have put a dollar into the break even, a dollar would have come back out. But the break even wasn't ready. So I ran $2,000 directly to the workshop and made sales and then all of a sudden the break even was ready so I set that up and, and away we went. Most people would have abandoned the entire thing. They would have... And this is the part that's so uh, frustrating to watch when people do this and you're trying to help them be successful is when they have momentum, but they quit, not because they're not on the right track. They've got the momentum. They're going in the right direction. They quit because it got a little bit hard. Or they quit because what they thought was going to happen didn't happen. Or they quit because their expectations weren't met. Or they're uncomfortable. Or it's whatever for whatever reason. I know very few people who quit because they have decisively collected enough data that it isn't working. Most people who jump from shiny object to shiny object have convinced themselves that something isn't working, but the reality is they don't have enough data. They say, well, I sent 10 cold outreaches. I sent... What I tell the people who uh, take our cold outreach training, if you haven't sent out 100 cold outreaches per day for at least a week or two, you can't conclusively say that it isn't working. That's just not how life works. Life doesn't work on the day, like it doesn't reveal itself in the day to day. It reveals itself over long periods of time. I can't remember who said the quote, but they say people overestimate what they can accomplish in a day and underestimate what they can accomplish in five years. That's how life is measured. So when people are quitting, jumping shiny object to shiny object, they're often making that decision based off of one or two days, certainly not off of six months, 12 months, five years. So the way that you navigate this this temptation to jump to the next shiny object is to look at what are your constraints, meaning what is the lane that you want to drive in? What is the business that you want to run? What does it look like exactly? What can you find flexibility within instead of swinging wide every time something bad happens? This is why in the mentoring and coaching program, the No Pants Project, we spend so much time figuring out what your dream business looks like, who you want to work with, and what it feels like, how much you're making. We are putting constraints around basically the the sort of area in which you can play in which you can make mistakes, in which you can find flexibility and make adjustments. They say creativity loves constraints, right? How many writing exercises are there You know that, that say, if you're struggling with a blank page, answer this question. Well, the question itself is a creativity constraint. Uh, how many you know, art and design prompts are there that help to inspire creativity? It's because the prompt itself is is is. A constraint. The same is true when you're trying to build something as creative as a business. Okay, so lesson number two is specific. Or sorry, lesson number three is that flexibility within constraints is a helpful, helpful tool. All righty, let's see. Lesson number four is accountability works, my friends. <laughs> I don't care how you get accountability, whether you need to publicly post on your Facebook page, whether you need to have a friend to whoop you in the bum, or whether you join our coaching and accountability or coaching and mentoring program, which has someone who is dedicated to calling you every 30 days and seeing what the heck you're up to. Plus, in the group, we have accountability, et cetera, et cetera. I don't care how you get accountability. 
You need accountability to stay focused, to get stuff done. The reason this 45-day challenge works, and, and I'm going to be totally transparent and real with you here, that's the most money I've ever made from scratch, starting from zero, $108,000 with it didn't exist before, and then 45 days later it existed. I can tell you the number one reason that that happened is because every single day I, I had to post a video. I had taken people's money and said, I'm going to post a video every single day. So I had to post a video every single day. There's this really bad idea that's floating around right now, which is that all stress is bad stress. That's scientifically not true. There's something called U-stress. I believe it's spelled E-U-S-T-R-E-S-S, U-stress. Go look it up, find it for yourself, verify it, that it's an actual scientific principle. U-stress is good stress. It's the stress that gets us off of our bums and creates something and allows us to be more than what we are in stasis that allows us to push ourselves just enough to create something that maybe we didn't even know was possible. Remember how I said the point of this podcast is to help you to get to a point where you can create something you didn't even know was possible? I'm telling you right now, being forced to to click record and work in public and post every single day is a huge reason why I was able to generate $108,000. Because I'll tell you, there were many times during the 45 days where I just thought, ugh, I don't want to do this right now. And if I hadn't had that forced accountability, I know myself enough to know I would have procrastinated it. I just would have, you know, like, oh, you know what? Maybe I don't need to make this much that fast. I'll just do it six months, a year, whatever. Accountability is super, super important. Super, super important. If you need help with accountability, we have a program. There's lots of programs out there. You don't even need a program. Go look up accountability tips. Again, get a partner. Do something. Don't leave it all up to yourself to be some kind of superhuman, high-achieving you know, I don't even know what, right? Most people need help to push beyond their limits. And I think what you'll find is people like helping each other to be accountable. So it's a much easier ask than it probably feels like uh, in the moment. Those of you, by the way, those of you listening who are in our programs, um, whether you're in Expert Maker, whether you're in Triple Point, whether you're in No Pants, it, hopefully this audio will inspire you to right now, literally stop this audio, go in the group, reach out, and get an accountability partner if you don't have one right now. Get an accountability partner. Make sure you've got your calls scheduled with your accountability coach if you're in No Pants Project. You get four of them. Make sure you use all four. All right, lesson number five, price is power. It's also peace of mind. Let me explain. The core element of this 45-day challenge was selling a $1,000 program. If I had tried, and I almost did, I almost did, and I'm so glad I didn't, but if I had tried to do this same thing, selling a $97 $97 program or a $47 program or a even a $295 program. I would have put myself under a tremendous amount of pressure to produce that much that quickly. Now don't get me wrong. You can make six figures a year selling a $97 product to an email list that's well engaged. We teach you how to do that in our program. It absolutely works. But to make $20,000, which was our original goal, in 45 days from scratch, from zero, not gonna happen with $97 product. 
to make a hundred grand in forty five days from scratch you you need better pricing. I dive into this a little bit deeper into episode eight of the No Pants Show where I tell you some more details about uh, this strategy and this process. But it's important for you to understand how powerful price is uh, because in this 45-day challenge, I had a lot of room to mess up because my price was high. Price allows peace when you're trying to figure out your marketing. Because you can mess up a lot and still be okay. That's much more difficult to do if each sale you make is not that much money. So a lot of freelancers commoditize themselves. They don't raise their prices appropriately to match their freedom number, etc. And so what happens is when they try marketing, whatever it is they're, they're doing, right? They're like, I just need to figure out something to market. How do I market this thing? What they find is that they have to be perfect in their marketing. Because if they aren't, then they're not selling enough, whether they're spending money on marketing or whether they're spending their time on marketing. Because their price is so low, they have to be absolutely perfect at what they do. Otherwise, they lose money or they lose time unnecessarily. If you price your services appropriately, you reduce the bad stress, not the you stress, the bad stress, the stress that causes worry, the stress that causes frustration. You reduce bad stress around marketing and growing your business, around the sales process. Now, sales conversations aren't high pressure. You know, the problem, the the reason most salespeople are high pressured salespeople is not because they're sleazy and gross people. They're people just like you. Get off your high horse there for a second. People who are in sales are just people just like you are. But if they work for a company that has these unbelievably unrealistic quotas, guess what's going to happen? Their natural reaction is going to be to put the pressure on a sales situation because they have gotten the pressure on them from some unrealistic quota. When you don't price your services or products appropriately, you are putting an unrealistic quota on yourself and you have to resort to pressury, gross, smarmy, sleazy tactics because the math won't work unless you do. So if you want to be the person who isn't gross in selling, you need to raise your price. You need to make it easy for you to not be tempted to do something because it is a slippery slope to go down that path. You you think, oh, I'm not going to be that person. I'm not going to be that person. And then you have, then rents due next week. Don't even give yourself the temptation. Price appropriately so you can say no more than you have to say yes. And you'll find that your sales, let's say for just for example, your sales call, it's not even a sales call anymore. It's just a, I wonder if we're a good fit. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, yeah, you would be a good fit. Okay, well, you know, it's about $5,000 to get started. Oh, I don't have the money. Okay. Wait, you aren't going to like try and force me to go get a, uh, what, a credit card? On, what, uh, no, you don't have the money. I'm not going to worry about it. So again, price is not only power, it's, it's price is, is peace of mind. And it's a beautiful thing to have. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing to have. It allows you to make all sorts of mistakes. Lesson number six, habits create wins, not random bursts of energy. It is habits that will create your wins, not random bursts of energy. Trying to create, again, the original goal of the 45-day uh, challenge was $20,000. Trying to create $20,000 from scratch, from zero, again, even after a decade of me doing this, is still like such a huge idea. 
There's so many moving pieces. There's so many moving parts. There's so many things that you have to do that I'm reminded of the old saying, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. I think a lot of people when they're trying to grow their business or start their business, again, it's the same kind of knee-jerk reaction thing that causes shiny object syndrome. That same response makes people think that everything has to be a home run. I need to work 47 hours straight. I need like it's just these big bursts of energy instead of like a daily drip. A calm, consistent, steady daily drip. For example, someone might be tempted thinking that the way to grow their business is to spend a week in a flurry of activity sending thousands and thousands of outreach messages. And while that is possible... It's certainly not optimal because at the end of the week, you're going to be dead. You'll be so tired. Also, there are limits to the human, the human brain, the human mind, the brain, I think the brain and the mind, there's probably limitations in both areas, both in the software and the hardware, in what we can focus on for a certain length of time. In other words, when you are energized and thinking, I'm going to just like work 90 hours and I'm going to make this thing happen, at a certain point, you start getting diminishing returns. And so your effort is less worthwhile than if you were to take a break, get some rest, fuel your body, make some connections, regain focus, and come back and try it again later. What would be a more appropriate approach to growing a business would be something like this daily podcast. Those of you who are listening to this fairly live, obviously this is not a live podcast, but you're here, you'll see this episode drop. We're only getting about 60 or 70 views per episode when you sort of uh, put it all together. So on iTunes and Spotify and Google Play and Anchor and all these sorts of things, we're only getting about 60 or 70 views per episode. That's not a lot. That ain't going to make me a rich man. However, if I continue to drop a new episode every day, Eventually, not only will 60 to 70 views per episode start to kind of add up over time, right? 300, oh, let's say you do 300 in a year, 300 times 60 to 70 views, that's a lot of views. That can put some money in my pocket. But there's also this thing that happens. Um, I believe Brendan Burchard calls it circular virulosity. I don't know if there's a scientific name for it. Um, I know that I've personally observed it many, many times in my own uh, businesses, uh, in, 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 the, in the work that I do with my clients' businesses. But there's a thing that happens to people who remain consistent, and it's almost like an instant. It's almost like a moment. It's almost like... You probably could study it, and I'm sure smart people have. I just haven't done my research and and sort of um, figuring out how they've categorized it. But there's a moment when that slow and steady approach breaks into exponential results. So... The very beginning of this podcast, I said, I want you to be able to have at your disposal the ability to get results better than you ever thought possible. I know for a fact that if I continue to show up every single day and do this podcast, eventually it's going to blow up. 
And it, it doesn't have to blow up to millions and millions of people. It could just blow up that all of a sudden I get way better at doing it. I have a breakthrough and it becomes easier to achieve what I want to achieve with the podcast itself. Or maybe it does blow up in terms of sees a lot of people. Or maybe it blows up in that one person who has influence, the influence that I, that would help me, that one person with the right influence sees one of the episodes, sends me an email and says, let's work together. Let me give you an example in my own career. I uh, sent the daily email for about six or seven years. And of course, you know, I had all sorts of success. Lots of people purchased from me. I was running a multi six figure business for most of those six or seven years because of the daily email that's slow and steady. I'm going to add value every single day to the people who are on my email list, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the big explosive moment was about five years in where I got a random email from someone who had seen one of my emails, wasn't even on my email list. Somebody had forwarded it to that person, says, you need to check this guy out. That person contacted me out of the blue and says, I've got a dream project for you. Would you like to work on it? I took that opportunity and because of that opportunity, not, it literally was a dream project. It was like a full circle. My life is complete project. But it was also, in terms of my professional career, an exponential point in which I was at the point where I was just like, this is way better than I could have ever imagined, okay, without giving away too many details. More than just money, it was all sorts of other things that I had been really, really wanting and waiting for. So, and, and look, it doesn't have to take five years I learned this in the 45-day challenge. Because I showed up every single day in the 45-day challenge and because I made it a habit, right? I just, every single day, I turned on the video and I said, here's what I'm doing today. That accountability I was talking about. Because of that, what happened is, and you can see it, like if you were to graph the results of the 45-day challenge, you can see there was a point where everything clicked and week after week we were making money. Because remember, for the first two weeks, we didn't make any sales. So the $108,000 in profit came not in 45 days. It was the last few weeks. And it was because we made it a habit and showed up every single day doing our work. And for those, and there was a, there was a, there was a desert period for the first two, three, four weeks where it was like, I don't even know why I'm showing up anymore. But we stayed consistent, and then all of a sudden, the exponential, this is better than I ever could have imagined. But it doesn't happen in these random spurts of manic energy. It happens over time, like a faucet that drips water and eventually carves out the Grand Canyon. Not that the Grand Canyon was carved out by a faucet. I didn't exactly know what I was going to say when I started saying it. <laughs> but you get the idea, right? If you just have, I mean, you've seen it in, in older houses, uh, a faucet that just drips water or a pipe that just drips water. It can make a hole in concrete within our lifetime. That's ultimately the key to getting these big results quickly. Again, with this podcast, I mean, I'm not trying to make any predictions because unfortunately, as far as I can understand it, it's very difficult to predict when that breakout moment's going to happen. But I don't think it's going to be very long before this podcast has delivered more to me than I could have ever expected. I mean, I'm talking probably maybe like two or three months. And because this is enjoyable to do, the habit's very easy. And that's, you know, that's one of the things that's important about habits and kind of leads to lesson number seven. So lesson number seven is that the internet is unbelievably incredible and amazing. There's a lot of things about the internet that I don't like. I don't like social media. 
I'm reading a book right now um, called Irresistible. I can't remember the author's name. It's an, auto, it's an audio book called Irresistible. First chapter, the guy points out that most tech giants don't let their kids on the devices that they make. That's how poisonous social media is. I'm not a big fan of it. I'm not a big fan of the results it's created in our society. Uh, I think it was meant to bring us together. It seems like it split us up pretty pretty hard. Um, I don't like how nasty people are on the internet, that they think they can just sit there and, and say things without, you know. Uh, some stuff just seems like you should, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I grew up in too rough of a place, but uh, some of the things that people say, I know when I was a kid, you couldn't say that kind of stuff. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> Not to anybody's face, anyways. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of things I don't like about the internet. But as a tool, the internet is amazing. You can, within 24 hours, and for a couple of bucks, and a little bit of elbow grease, get people's eyeballs on the thing you're trying to do. Thanks to Facebook ads, thanks to Twitter ads, thanks to Pinterest ads, thanks to all sorts of ads. You don't want to do ads? That's fine. Guess what else you can do? You can create a Facebook profile. We'll just use your Facebook profile. Don't create a second one. That's against terms of service. You can join a bunch of Facebook groups, interact with people, be friends with them, share stuff on your wall, and a bunch of people can see what you're doing. The ability to get attention... is absolutely, first off, it's unprecedented for it to be this easy. I'm getting your attention. If you're still listening to this right now, I've gotten, I've had your attention for 46 minutes. That's insane. If you think about what that means for you as a freelancer, as a creative, as a producer, as somebody who makes something. The opportunity for you to succeed is limitless if you're willing to put in the work to make it happen. I'm doing this from, I just have a phone. It's, it's a, it's, this is, a, this is how I'm saying it's, it's a, a semi affordable phone, affordable for, I would say, probably average. Americans. Most Americans have a phone better than mine. I don't have the new latest greatest phone. I'm on a phone in my room using a free application to tell you something I learned from something I did because I'm passionate about it. I've been doing it for the past eight days. I'll continue doing it every day for the rest of this year. And because of that, my life is going to change in profound ways. I know this because I've seen it happen to my clients again and again and again. It's hard for me to completely hate the internet. Let me put it that way. (laughs) This is something that was not available before. The reason this is a lesson is because I want you to fully feel the gravity, feel the weight, feel the opportunity that is at your fingertips because you are alive right now. Because you are hearing the sound of my voice and you have listened to this podcast, you know now without a doubt that you have a tool at your availability to do whatever it is you want to do. You need to follow the lessons that I learned in my 45 days in order to do it. And if you do follow those lessons, what you'll have at the end is results better than you could ever imagine. But you do need to put in the work. That's the important piece that I want to make sure we all get here. So, really quick recap, and then we'll we'll end this episode for today. Lesson number one is that you need to learn how to let go of your limits. Your beliefs dictate your actions. Actions dictate results. Let go of the limiting beliefs. Number two, specific is always better. Whatever you're doing, make it more specific. Who are you serving specifically? Number three, Flexibility within constraints. Don't hop from shiny object to shiny object, guru to guru, thing to thing. Instead, define the goal and and be flexible within that goal to find solutions to where you're going. Lesson number four, accountability works. It just works. Figure out 
how to set yourself up for success with accountability. Figure out how you can get an accountability partner. If you want help from us, go to the nopantsproject.com. You'll have a dedicated accountability coach plus other members plus seven coaches who will hold you accountable besides your accountability coach. Lesson number five, price is power, but it's also peace of mind. Price accordingly. Price to how much you want to be stressed out. That's my advice. Lesson number six, habits make wins, not bursts of random energy. Slow it down, daily tasks, again and again and again and again and again, and eventually you'll hit circular virality, um, which I don't even know if that's a real word that Brendan made up, but it sounds good to me. <laughs> eventually it's going to break out and eventually you're going to get incredible results. Lesson number seven, the internet is incredible and it is a tool that you should be using to take control of your life so that you can do what you want to do. I'm not saying you're going to make 108000 in the next 45 days, but I'm telling you someone like me can make $108,000 in profit in 45 days. If that doesn't motivate you to get off your backside, someone like me, 10 years ago I was living in a tent in Forest Park. I'm sorry, the internet is freaking amazing. It's only going to be amazing if you take advantage of it and you put in the work though. All right, my dear friends, I hope that this episode has been helpful. This has been episode number nine, seven lessons learned from generating $131,777 in revenue in 45 days from zero. I'll see you on the next one.